<laughs> What's up, y'all? Welcome back to the gym. My name is Jay Cruz, and you're watching Threefold Fitness. Listen, I know you guys thought that maybe I took like a million takes to do that shot. It only took me two takes. But anyways, today we are gonna talk about this basketball court. We've been talking about the gym so often and the equipment that's in there, but we haven't talked about this feature that a lot of people don't have you know, access to or um, have availability to, but this is what we're gonna talk about on how uh, we put this flooring in. It is from Snap Sports. Uh, it is called Silver Maple is the style that it is, the actual flooring. And actually, let's cut to the actual insulation. All right, you guys, today is the day. We are just done cleaning the floor for the basketball court. Uh, we washed it by hand. We're going to be putting in the flooring. So the flooring is all in there. You guys saw it in the last video. Um, I'll show you guys that in a second, but we're gonna start from that end and we're gonna put down some um, acoustic foam underneath before we put the floor on. And we're starting from that side. I'm gonna go this way and you'll see it, it is like a gray color with a black key. But let's go down stairs right now and I will show you, uh, show you both the underlayment and I will show you the, the sports part. I think I showed it in the last video, but this is a little closer look the floor. Spare you guys the time lapse of us cleaning it. I mean, you've seen people wash the floor by hand before. If you haven't watched Cinderella, it's like in the beginning of the movie. Um, so here it is. This is the Snap Sport Sport Court. It is, you can't really see it. No, you can't see it. It's it's gray. Let me turn on the light in here. It's a uh, maple or silver maple is what it is actually. Um, and then this is the underlayment right here. It comes in six foot rolls. I think they're 45 feet each. So no, they have to be more than that. Let me see. They are four rolls of, I don't know, look at it. It's in like a different language, so I don't know what that is. At any rate, oh, it shows my address. Okay, well, you won't see that. At any rate, it, uh, there's enough to cover the whole floor. So we maybe we will do a time lapse of us throwing, throwing it out on the floor. And I gotta take my shoes off because I walked into this dirty room. I don't wanna track that. Anyways, once the floor dries in about 20, 30 more minutes, we'll put the floor in. So probably like five more minutes. Should be good to go. I just took the before pictures and this is the before video. There it is. We put that up the other day. The, one of the hardest things I've ever done in my life. And then we just put up the hood for the roll-up door as well. That's all. Next shot you'll see is us putting the floor in. Watch the entire, well, not the entire video of us installing it. It was most of it. I didn't realize that I didn't record all of it in time lapse, so you got to about um, this section of the flooring. But for the most part, it's a puzzle, and they they explain to you um, how to put all of it in. You get it in that big pallet, like I showed you, and it's numbered. But there's a few things that we had to do before we installed it to prep the floor. Let me show you one of those things. This is um, a floor scraper i'm not sure what the technical term is for it but we needed to use this thing to get all the high points off the floor so when people make like a garage or a contractor makes a garage there's some extra concrete sometimes like little spots so we use this and i'm gonna show you what we did oh let me turn the slide on this side could just be right here um 
So what we did was if there was like any high spots on the floor, like you can see this spot right here. Can you see this spot? Good enough. Okay, so we use this scraper and just push off the high spots like that. If there's a high spot over here. Ugh. That's all we did. So we scraped off pieces like that to make sure that everything was nice and smooth. Because if you uh, play on any kind of surface and you feel like little bumps and stuff on this, um, it would be annoying. So we smoothed off the entire floor before we installed that rubber matting that you saw. That rubber matting, let me get some, let me get that so I can show you a close up of what that looks like. Give me one second, I'll be right back. So that roll looks like this. Um, you can actually buy this at a regular like store. It's kind of like the matting that you put in cabinets. It's very similar to that. But what this does is it helps with acoustics. If you watched that first video, well, you did watch the first video, but you can see how, or hear how echoey it was inside of here. And now there's a lot less echo and this helps with that. So this traps some of the sound and doesn't let it move. And it also makes this floor a lot more uh, pleasant, I guess we want to say for your knees and your ankles. When you're jumping on top of it, it doesn't, um, the impact is not as much because of that, that piece. So this is what the tiles look like after we put that that inlay down. It's a quarter of an inch, I believe, rubber. We put these tiles on it, and yes, they are plastic. It's a, I'd have to find the name of it. I'll put the name of whatever it is right here below. But they're like puzzle pieces, and they only go in one direction. It's the only way that they go, so they'll go like this. So it'll be connect like this so that they go um, with each other. So we'll never go um, in opposite directions, like it wouldn't, whoa. That's my, uh, my smooth skills here. It wouldn't ever go in like this direction because then it wouldn't continue if you see how the, the end little um, class look, it wouldn't go together. You can look at the underside real quick. So you can see that there's some like high spots and low spots. This is so that when you're on it, um, it has a little bit of give, once again, so that it's good, it's better for your knees, it's better for your joints. If this was concrete in here, we wouldn't be able to play basketball in here for hours or volleyball for hours. And then here's how they interlock. They just interlock like this. And that's it, you just press it in so it looks like this. When we put them in, and you just step on it. And that's it, it was clicked in. So when you watch that video and you saw us putting them in here, they already come in, I think it is four by four sections and they're all numbered. So they have give you like a little schematic that has all the numbers on it. And then you can place them all out according to that schematic, but they're all numbered. So it's like one here, all the way to like 12 and then 13 to 24, then 25 to whatever. And it's super easy. Now the tricky part comes with the edges. So what I chose to do with ours is we were gonna put baseboard up. So when I gave the measurement to the guy at Snap Sports, I gave him the measurement all the way to under the baseboard size so that I could install this under the baseboard and then the baseboard could be put on afterwards. So it just gives it a super, like a, a way more clean look. This is the tool that we use to cut, well, that's not it. This is the tool that we use to cut them. It is a, um, a floor tile or PVC cutter, and it made it super easy because the whole back, so the whole back edge of the gym was about three inches shorter than a, than a full piece. So what we did was we put it in like so, and this makes it really easy. And I can show you, if you go to the back side, you would mark whatever it is with like a marker so you can see what the cut was. And then you just do this to cut it. And now your piece is cut. The other option is, instead of doing that, is using a utility knife to cut it. You know, stand, uh, a standard just utility knife. And I'm telling you right now, the line will not be straight. 
if you cut with this. And also, it's not gonna be good on your hand. Your hand's gonna feel horrible after doing it. But I did have to use this tool, and I'll show you where. On little detail corners like this. So this piece was just slightly bigger than this space here. So I had to cut this corner off here, cut a little slice there, and cut a little slice here. And there's a bunch of those everywhere there's a door space or doorway. I had to do that on every single one of those. And also all the way along the the uh, roll up 16 by six roll up door. I had to do it there as well. Uh, this, I think I mentioned it before. The gray one is called silver maple. And then I wanted an accent for the key and it's just all plain black. So these actually cost a dollar less than this. And the reason for that is that there is an extra layer on top of this maple to make it look this way so it looks a lot nicer than this does but the contrast of this versus the entire floor being just the silver maple would have been horrible so i opted for this you might be asking about durability and how well does it um, stand up well here is a piece that we had some guys that were moving in furniture here and they pushed a piece across the floor if you can definitely scrape it and the product can get scraped um, if you dig into it, but there is no, like from normal wear and tear on our floor, nowhere on the entire floor that looks like this. It also looks brand new. It might look a little bit less shiny than it originally did because we use it, but for the most part, it holds up. If you look at the three point line area, they paint this on for you. So they actually fully assemble this in their warehouse. They paint the lines they number it and then they disassemble the entire thing. But the line on here, we've had this for almost a year now. We play volleyball in here constantly, basketball in here constantly, and the line is still crisp, like it's like the same as when it first came. You might be wondering, okay, well, what if one does get damaged? Well, they sent me, a, like, I think it's like 20 extra of the uh, silver maple, and they sent me about 10 extra of the black. So if so someone does get damaged, I can replace them. You might be wondering, how do you get one that's in the center of the floor? Because you can't get your fingers around it to, to lift it up if you need to replace one. The edge ones, like I just mentioned, right here, if it's on the very edge, it's very easy to just pull it up like that and pull it out. But the center ones, you need this tool. It's, a, um, it's for glass, it's for holding glass. But because the tops of these are so um, well made and they're, you know, don't, they're not porous, you could just put it on like this and then you would put your foot on the one next to it and it pulls right up like that. So then you can get to it and pull that, that one out if you want to replace it. And you can pull that one piece out and then you can replace that piece at any time. So that's how you would get to a center one if you need the center one replaced. If you would want one of these replaced here that have paint on it, you have two options. You can either buy the paint that the company used or you'd have to ask them specifically for that piece, send them a picture of, hey, here's the one that I'm missing and they could replace that piece. Hopefully if that's not the one you, you got messed up. I would recommend that if you, you got that one messed up, you just deal with whatever the imperfection is because I don't know, it doesn't look too bad. Even this piece that's scratched, I'll show you again. In light of the entire court, like that wouldn't be that big of a deal. Yes, within a year, if you had that, it would be an issue. But after years and years of having this for a while, this should the wear and tear like this. I think you should expect that over time, especially if you use it a lot. Last piece that I would say is um, I ordered these and you kind of have to tell these to the company as well when you order it, how many edge pieces you need. I think these are like a dollar each or something like that. And I needed something that transitions from the court to the gym. So this is what I used here. And these were three inches long. So they're about this thick. And every time you use one of these, um, I had to measure the distance that I needed to cut it because of, because of the ramp edge. Um, and it makes just a nice transition over so you don't have this, this weird edge hanging off. You have um, this nice smooth transition that comes down and and again that cutter 
came in handy for this part because you have to cut every single one of these individually too. And if you see, I have a nice like edge here all the way down because I used that cutter and I measured this side and that side before I cut it, like the distance between here and here and here and here, so that, that um, the angle would be correct as I went down this edge. So I just talked about what it looks like um, as an indoor like court. This is all indoor tile. They do also offer outdoor tiles. And if you were to do this outdoor in a space that doesn't have an edge, I would say it, it would take you a total of like an hour of tops with a quart this size to put it all out and put the ramp edge on because you would just pull it off of the pallet, put it down, snap them all together. Um, first, making sure that you have it on the front edge the way that you want it. And then everything else would lead up after that. But uh, it, if it was outside, super easy. Uh, and uh, I think, you know, indoors is very one-off and not very many people would have the space to do that. But if you have an outdoor court, I definitely recommend this. They have ones that don't have, it's not flat on top, it actually has pores. So if it rains, uh, the water will hit the top, but then will drain right through it. So the top of the surface will drain a lot faster and be uh, dry faster than it would be if it, you just had asphalt or concrete out. Uh, that's the advantage of having it, but also like I said before, like just the feel of it on your feet and on your knees, it's a it's a hundred percent different than just playing on concrete. It's, it'll save your knees and save your ankles. Overall, if I could rate this product, um, one out of ten, um, I don't know. Like I think that obviously hardwood would be much better. Uh, but the maintenance for it would be like way higher for this to clean. We just wipe it off with a dry mop and then like every once in a while, wipe it down with towels. Um, and there's actually like a, um, uh, a floor cleaner that you can use that you just drag behind you and it wipes the entire thing. That's like $500, but that would make it even faster. So it would be like a five minute cleanup, but, um, a hardwood floor, like while it would be better, the maintenance to like polish it, wax it, keep it clean, all that kind of stuff and to make it look good will be like way higher on the higher end. But in terms of somebody that wants something that looks high end, but is low maintenance, I would recommend this 100%. So like one to 10, I would say for what it is, a 10, definitely. But for what you could have, I would give it an eight. But like I said, if you have the higher end product, it means higher end maintenance, where this is almost no, almost no maintenance. You just sweep it like a regular four and, and mop it and it, and it works well. Um, I will leave a link to this company below because if I believe in a product, you know, I'm going to stand behind them and I'll, and I recommend them. I'll put a link to them in below and then all the tools that I, I got, I actually got them off of Amazon. So I will put a link to those also below if you are planning to do this project and you need the tools as well. Or if you said, oh, I need that tool for some other project, I'll put that in below. Um, yeah, overall, we love the court. And um, it's like the funnest thing, doing family stuff and hanging out with your family and making a space like the gym that we have and the basketball court slash volleyball court slash um, pickleball court. Uh, oh, speaking of which, hold on, we're coming to a close, but let me speak about one more thing. If you're planning on using this as a pickleball court, real quick, while it is good for your knees, it is not good for pickleball bounce. I know that they advertise it for pickleball. Maybe I did something wrong. Maybe my floor tile is the wrong type, but this is the normal pickleball and it does not, it does not bounce. It does not give the same response as it would like on the outside tennis court or off of concrete because it deadens, you know, the, it absorbs shock. So that's the bounce that it gets. So for us to play pickleball, we had to get these like slightly oversized tennis balls so that it has a better bounce. So let me just show you that real quick. So I will say for that reason, if you're getting it for pickleball specifically, because I know they advertise it for that, here it hasn't worked. And I'm not saying it doesn't work in every situation because I haven't seen every other situation, but in our application here, it just did not work. Okay, I think I covered it all. If you have any other questions, if you have something that you feel like I didn't cover, or something that you have questions about, please put those below. I always answer those as quickly as I can. Um, thank you for hanging out with us. Thank you for watching the video. Thank you for all you guys' support. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, I recommend that you do that now. If you have subscribed, thank you so much. And if you liked the video, 
like the video. As for now, that is goodbye, and we will see you in the next video.